So I will Got count it. us in here. In three, two, one, we're rolling. Hello and welcome to the walk off, everybody. I'm Scott Belford, normally joined by the one and only Adam Mag. He is busy, and so we've got, well, the most available, wow. the most available fill in we could find on short notice. That's really right. happy to have you back on the show, Sean. Hey. Mr. Lacomber, comedian and Jay's enthusiast. Yeah. And uh, no, finally, I mean... something has happened in Blue Jays land we can talk about. What happened? Justin Turner. Is yes. now a Blue Jay. That, I I like him. I you know? I like him too. It's funny. Like I was telling I was telling uh my buddy just yesterday. I went for beers and we we're talking Jays. And my sentiment is it's weird to like a move, but also feel incredibly underwhelmed about it. Like oh yeah, I love this yeah. move, but I if this is it, pretty disappointing. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's like Christmas morning where like you were hoping for a laptop and you got like, in a, fact, you know, we were told Sean, that laptop was on a plane to us. <laughs> we were shaking the box. <laughs> yeah. We were shaking the box and it sounded like a laptop. It really did. And our dad said, don't shake it. So we we're like, it's got to be something <laughs> yeah. special. I can't, sh he told me to stop shaking it. So I know that it's got to be something. And then you open it up and you're like, okay, it's a notebook. I can write in it. Yeah. It's just, you know, like it's all I would have done on a laptop anyway is some writing and, you know, yeah. okay. It's, it's got our... bad knees. I shouldn't have shook it, but uh, no, yeah. I did not have shaken it. I didn't realize that this was a 39 year old notebook. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's the, I mean, that's the only thing about Turner, but I mean, that's why we got him, right? And the Jays love these like sort of like little bets, right? That's mm -hmm. and, and sometimes I wonder if we're a little too hard on the management team because if you grew up in the States, you know, you didn't see any Jays highlights ever on ESPN. And so there's a part of every athlete that's like, I want to do this thing and I want it to be noticed. I want people to notice that I'm, you know, when I have a monster game or whatever. And if you grew up in the States or something, you're like, well, I didn't see any Jays highlights I, unless they were playing the Yankees. And then they would like just show the Jays, you know, mishandling a ball in the infield or something. <laughs> like, you know, they don't really, there's not really a lot of Jays talk down there. So they don't really want to come here. You know, I think yeah. that that's like, it's not, it's, you know, yeah, of course they, you know, it's a hassle at the airport, but really it's that they know that it's not, you know, they could have a monster year in Toronto and nobody in their home country would, you know, be like, how's it going up there? Like, it's like almost like a different league. Well, I think that is, I mean, one of the biggest stumbling blocks this organization has had for like decades. So we will get into that. Cause I do want to talk to you about JD Martinez, why they chose Justin Turner. Uh, a couple little things have happened. It's come out that Davis Schneider, it looks like they're planning on platooning him in left field. So we'll get into his splits. Uh, Yariel Rodriguez, visa problems. The Orioles, dude. I mean, they go out and they nice. get a, like just and devastating news oh, <laughs> to God. Jay's fans yesterday. Corbin Burns, a legit ace. Uh, and then on yeah. top of it, the Orioles ship management group have sold the team to... A couple of billionaires with Cal yeah. Ripken in the uh, ownership group that want to build a winner in or in Baltimore, and man, yeah. do they have the foundations built to do so? Like adding money to that core is scary. So we'll we'll dive into yeah. that. Theo I mean, Epstein, they... it's crazy. Theo Epstein back to the Red Sox. We'll talk that real quick. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Um, upsetting every Yankees fan ever uh, appearing on the. MLB to the show 2024 uh, video game. And then uh, we'll, we'll go through the AL East you and I, and we'll kind of see where, how we're feeling about which teams are it where. Is, yeah. It is very group of death feeling, isn't it? It really is. So Sean, whenever we have a podcast and we don't specifically bring something up, uh, a lot of the listeners sometimes take it as we have taken the opposite position on this thing that we have not brought up. So we did our, our podcast. We did our <laughs> podcast on Tuesday and Justin Turner had just signed. So we talked about Justin Turner and what he brings to the team, but not bringing up how productive Brandon belt was last year, uh, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. So we'll just start with that in, in signing Justin Turner. I think really what this organization was doing was trying to replace Brandon belts numbers 
who looked pretty good in a Blue Jays uniform in 340 plate appearances. Uh, he had a batting average of 256 with 19 home runs, a win above replacement of two, an OPS plus of 136, so far above league average for the at bats he took, and then an on base percentage of 370. So Justin Turner last year had 558 at bats. So he had about 200 more plate appearances than Brandon Belt. He hit 276 was his batting average, 23 home runs. So I know everyone was talking about Justin Turner is going to bring a little bit more power, but if you just look at plate appearances, Brandon Belt per plate appearance was still hitting more dingers than Turner did. Uh, their war, very comparable, uh, a two war, and then an OPS plus of 114, so a little bit of a dip. Turner to Belt there and an on-base percentage of 345. I mean, is it safe to say this is, the best case scenario is Justin Turner literally just being Brandon Belt. Yeah, the third base, the guy who can play third, the Brandon Belt who can play third. Yeah, you know, a little I mean, bit that, of third. Would you be comfortable with bit. him there, like a hundred games? I mean, that feels a lot. I, I mean, that, yeah, that, that's that corner is pretty hot for a forty-year-old. Yeah, like your fast twitch slows a little bit, right? You lose that, you know, you lose that zip. You lose that zip offensively and defensively. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, we're so used to Chapman um, just gobbling everything up. So third base will be, I think, you know, will be, it'll test our pitching a little bit more, right? Like they'll be mm -hmm. like, uh-oh, an extra out to the Yankees and Soto's coming up or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, you just lose. Yeah, so we've downgraded defensively there. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, we were even talking Isaiah, about the uh, Isaiah Kiner Falafa, right? IKF who they just signed a couple months ago. He was like kind of the first domino to fall. Obviously he's going to take times at a time at third base as well. But you look at this team and you're like, well, it, it's Justin Turner, Davis Schneider, like Santiago Espinal, Kevin Vigio. Yeah. Like IKF. These are the guys that are going to be taking their reps at third. It sure doesn't feel as safe as a it match. Feels, Chapman. Yeah, it, it kind of feels back to the future for the Jays where it's like, wait a minute, but, you know, we've lost a bunch of pieces and then we'll say, you know, well, we need a big year from Kirk and Guerrero and we need Bigio, like Biggio. Can he become an everyday guy? And like, you know, Bichette, maybe he's going to have his MVP breakout season. And and so it's like, we're back to that where we're like, we're just going to rely on those guys. Hope and, we're and relying Marshall. on hope here, Sean, which scares the shit out of me. Yeah, we basically swung and missed on a bunch of people. And, I, you know, like we were talking about the Flames before we came on. And it's like you went, you know, like it's not like the Jays strategically said, like Justin Turner, you know, yes. it was like swing and miss, swing and miss, swing and miss, swing. And it looks like he might come like, mm -hmm. so that's how, you know, if we were in the management team of the Jays, it'd be the first question is like, are they interested in coming? Like, are they interested in coming if we overpay by X, if we overpay in term by, you know, like. So then you have to, yeah, it's, it's gotta be hard, right? Like you have to be, we have to pay more. We have to give more term, you know, it's not easy. And then they still don't like, want to come. Some of them. You look at what Justin Turner got, right? $13 million. Um, the Red Sox also had to buy him out of the contract that they had with him. So they paid $6 million for him to walk away. So Justin Turner's making $20 million this year which is impressive for a 39 year old who's turning 40 this season. Yeah. So the other option that got talked about a lot, Jorge Soler, 31 years old, but also if you look at his track record over his last nine seasons, yeah, he had that mega 46 home run year. And then he had a 36 home run year, but those are the only two years that he hit over 30 home runs. Like there's obviously some risk to a guy like that. And then the other name that kept getting mentioned was JD Martinez. And I do wonder JD Martinez at 36 years old, a guy who does profile with a little bit more power than Justin Turner does. If he just didn't want to come to Toronto, right? Like you'd think for yeah, one that's... year, 13 million, that's right around what JD would get. Yeah. I'm used to being the fa a fan of, you know, I grew up being a fan of teams who couldn't spend. You know, they didn't have the Oilers, whatever. It's like, oh, they don't have enough money. The Jays, right? I mean, the Jays, you know, back in the day, like, couldn't come. And we could just sort of say, oh, we can't compete. We don't have the money. And then all of a sudden, I'm, you're the fan of a team that has the resources. Yes. And nobody's coming, you know. And it's like, this is almost more depressing when you have it, it an organization really is. where you're like, 
we can outspend anybody and a lot of people still ain't coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being the it's like being a rich kid who like has his birthday party at the zoo and three kids show up and you're like, there should have been a better turnout. I mean, this yeah. is like free day at the zoo, you know, everybody, yeah. this rich kid. You're just like, damn it. I knew it should have been the pool. Everyone goes to the pool parties. <laughs> should have gone to the pool party, man. Everybody loves a water slide. But yeah, I mean, I guess he, yeah. Well, and J.D. Martinez, too, profiles to me, like politically as somebody who was never going to come here. You yeah. Know, he, is, he is full MAGA, right? So he would have been like, you know, anti-lockdown, pro-trucker, freedom, <laughs> right. freedom boy, right? So he wasn't going to want to come here and be on some like, you know, liberal team. <laughs> <laughs> team loaded with libs oh great so as he, long I mean, as we can like, as long as we can let the political system just bleed into every aspect of every part of life that's where i really want this to end up you yeah. know <laughs> where it's and like it, oh and man. it always does and, Toronto, and most, yeah, and most of the athletes most of the athletes are pretty good at keeping like a lid on their politics like obviously in toronto we know some players don't but jd martinez was one of those guys that was like yeah. pretty open about his uh so I don't think I when I heard his name come up, I was like, he's never coming here. Yeah. Just never. Um sure would but, love sure would love that big conservative bat of his though, man. I know. <laughs> he gets one over the wall with two on, and you're like, I don't care who you vote for, just <laughs> yeah, keep doing right. that. <laughs> you know, so, I'll take yeah. We'll 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 move on. There's not a lot to talk about blue Jays wise. I know I just read an article stating from Scott Mitchell, a TSN. He joined us last week and he's uh, heard from management that it does look like they're going to be trying to platoon Davis Schneider in left field with either Kiermaier or Var show. And you start looking into the guy's splits and it does make a lot of sense. Although my problem is this is a kid who, I mean, broke major league records for his debut. 25 years old. Has about two months of big league baseball under his belt. Yeah. I, I putting well, my question to you would be like, who's playing second? Who plays second base? Is it like IKF and, and Espinal? I mean, it's um, the it's same true. cast of characters that can play third base. Like our third base and our second base are these big question marks right now of it's going to be Kevin Biggio and Santiago Espinal, mm -hmm. IKF, Justin Turner's probably going to get some reps in there, uh, Davis Schneider. And this is before we even talk about some of these guys that are on the bubble, like Alan Rodon and Damiano Pamagiani and like guys that are like probably mm -hmm. succeeded to the, the best they can in AAA. And the next step is the bigs. So I'm not sure what yeah, you do Horowitz, here. Is Horowitz on the team? Like, is he? Like, Horowitz is another guy, absolutely, where you look at his numbers at AAA and he's ready to take the jump to the bigs. It's just, is there a spot for him? I mean, how many how many second basemen can we have? <laughs> yeah, it definitely doesn't have the feeling of, like, an elite offensive team, right? It, it doesn't have that feel. So and maybe that's okay. Maybe it's okay for them to be like a scrappy Blue Jays team. They tend to be. They tend to almost be better when they're a scrappy underdog. You know, like and maybe you can piece this together using two guys platooning. I mean, if you look at Davis Schneider against lefties, so he was only he only had forty three at bats. You know, like we're talking a pretty minimal sample size, but he did have fourteen hits in that time. Uh, 10 RBIs, 10 walks, 16 strikeouts, and six of his eight dingers were against left-handed pitching. So he does have better power against lefties. His, his numbers against righties and 73 at bats. He has 18 hits, 10 RBIs, 11 walks and 27 Ks. So he is hitting lefties quite admirably. And I mean, if you look at Varsho, it is the complete opposite. He had 20 home runs last year, all of them. Mm -hmm. All of them against right-handed hit uh, I mean, pitchers. Whenever people are extolling the virtues of David Schneider as a hitter, they always say he knows his limitations, which is like, that's a great, uh, you know, that's like, hey, this guy's your starter. And he's, what's the best thing about him? He knows what he can't do. And that's what I love about him. <laughs> <laughs> what can't he do? A lot. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of pitches he can't hit, but he knows he can't hit him and he doesn't swing at him. And that's what I love about him. It's like, yeah. okay, 
well, you can still get that guy out, right? Like, so you you have the feeling as a fan, I do anyway, of like, well, Davis Snyder, Davis Snyder, Schneider does seem like the kind of player that uh, big league team should at some point be able to figure out and get him out. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay. But I mean, they haven't been so. I mean, he was hitting, you know, when he came back in, and when they gave him a chance, he kept hitting. Right? He did mm-hmm. keep. And I don't care. Like for me, I I mean, I guess I'm just a weird fan where I'm like, whoever's hitting, throw him in. I don't care. You know, like, and I mean, that's how they built their team is versatility. But it's like, yeah. Whoever's hitting, I mean, I don't care if he's like a, you know, it, I mean, last year made me realize like maybe Tay Oscar being shaky in the outfield, like wasn't that big of a deal. Like he was like, <laughs> he just looked, sh- he just, his, the optics were terrible. Like his, op- yes. he, he made all, most of the plays, but, and our outfield defense last year was on, like just laughably. Oh, good. It, was, like, it, it was insane. I mean, but, if, no, but, then, had... but then if the next inning starts and you don't get anybody on or you can't get anybody in, then who cares? Well, this is just what you were saying, right? Like Dalton Var shows outs above average. He had, I think it was 26 on the season, which led all of baseball by a substantial amount. So he technically saved uh, 26 balls that would have just been doubles in any other scenario, yeah. which is amazing. But yeah, it does make you wonder how many of those, how many on the other side of the plate did did it cost the Jays, right? Like this subtraction mm-hmm. and addition of defense and offense. That's, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's way smarter people than me that can figure out those metrics and, and give you the number. But I mean, like, you know, there's just something about being able to get an early run on the board or what, you know, like the, there's this psychology of the game where you just like the first inning, like we were terrible in the first inning, right? Like last year we were just like, yeah. You know, you get off to terror, you, you know, and then you're under pressure. You're, I mean, with you know, the pitching staff talked about it. You know, we the the number of high stressed innings that we throw, and then we get into the wild card game, and we've already, you know, or the wild card series, and we've already thrown a whole lot of high stress innings. We haven't had any laughers. We haven't had any, you know, just go out there and throw strikes, kiddo. If you mm-hmm. give up a couple home runs, who cares? It was always tight, low scoring games, high stress. And I mean, it looks, it's, you know, trending, like it'll be the same this year, right? Where it's like, we didn't, but it's weird that you start with the, Ota- I mean, obviously you guys have probably talked a ton about the Otani stuff, but it's just, you know, it's funny how now I hope he never pitches again, you know, like, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I no, totally funny. flipped and I'm like, hope he never throws the ball again. <laughs> um, You know, hope he just, you know, hope he's done just that little and smile. It feels to- weird to go from like, uh, just appreciative that this unicorn is playing yeah. baseball at the same time that I'm alive. And now I'm like, God, I hope his arm blows up. I like, know, and I'm like, cut <laughs> that fucking horn off. Cut, the horn, cut that, fucking... that horn off. Make him a horse. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just one of those scared villagers with a pitchfork. Like, cut that fucking horn off, that weird animal. Well, it is going to be interesting to see. I know I was watching uh, Foul Territory, another baseball podcast there with uh, all of the... AJ Brzezinski and Eric oh, Kratz, yeah, yeah. a bunch of those ex major leaguers that it's a great program actually, but they were talking about the fact that this is going to be the first season in Shohei's entire career. Like we're talking back to high school, everything like, because he always was such a unicorn and such an athlete that like, he just had almost a hundred percent of the people cheering him on a hundred percent of the time. And that this is yeah. going to be the first year where he goes to a stadium like when he comes to Rogers, he is going to hear some booze, and I I don't even think it's his fault, but just with what went down and what Toronto fans were like, this imaginary mm-hmm. plane with he was on, I mean the entire well, fan got, base was dragged behind it pretty much. <laughs> you also got you also got to see during that time, like uh, how little the baseball world knew about Toronto or the Jays. Mm-hmm. Because suddenly they were, you know, any podcast, any show, the Jays are coming up, and they're like what do you think about and then they're talking about toronto and the jays and it's like that's all wrong yes that information is correct you know that's not the kind of team we are well you know they're you know it's like that's not who we are that's not the team we are so slight slight self-promotion here but we had taylor sacedo so former blue jays bullpen pitcher now with the seattle mariners on uh a month ago talking about otani and some of the rhetoric that the U.S. journalists had said. And one of them was they were like, well, you know, Shohei is also going to want things to do. Like Toronto has 
nothing, nothing to do. And like Sasato burst out laughing at that. He was like, man, talk about someone who's never been to Toronto. He's like, yeah. to act like this is Cincinnati or some small like city, like it's not. <laughs> yeah, like is it Anaheim? Is it San Diego? No. I mean, is it, you know, is it like a beautiful, like is it 27 degrees every day and you can golf all year? What? No, but no. It's a big city and it's not, yeah, it's not much, but yeah, it's like, it's on this other planet, you know, like, mm -hmm. eh, I don't know, Toronto, he's going to want things to do. It's going to be awfully cold. And I don't know if he's, his arm might freeze and yeah, like they just bought into it. But yeah, it definitely gave me a sense of like, these guys don't know anything about this team other than like Vladdy and Bo. Like, yeah. Vladdy and Bo, that's all oh, Vladdy and Bo. It's like the odors with McDavid, like, you know, they were interviewing PK Subban and he's like, well, they're relying a lot on McDavid. And it's like, well, you're talking about two years ago or, or last year or whatever. That's mm -hmm. not, you know, you're not talking current Blue Jays or whatever, but. Oh, it happens I don't know. all the it's time. Just... It's like George Springer. They'll talk like George Springer is still the MVP caliber Houston Astro from, from five years ago. And it's like, have you watched him the last year or two? Cause <laughs> like he has slowed down a little bit. Like. I don't know. Yeah, I guess this is going to be the year. And I mean, and the worst part of it is watching Baltimore and New York and, and these other teams kind of reload and get better. And it's like, you just missed out on, or, I mean, even if you think like, maybe we didn't just miss out on Otani, you know, whatever, but, and it's nice to be in the mix. I, I get that sentiment where it's like, oh, it's nice to be involved in these things, you know, like years ago we weren't, and now we are like, this would have just been a quiet off season. Like, you know, our expectations have raised. Mm hmm where you, I mean, you know, for as a Jays fan, you're used to quiet off seasons. You're not thinking about blockbuster additions to your group. You're just like, hopefully this group that we have is better next year. Mm -hmm. you know? Like, and so now we are in this world of like, you know, the expectations are higher. And I mean, the management group just takes a shit kicking. Like they just get absolutely killed oh, on this stuff. And it's like, do you think that they didn't want Otani to come here? Do you think that they didn't want some of these? <laughs> Do you I mean, Ross that... Atkins was literally like, please save my job. Just come to Toronto and save my job because uh, you might be the only thing that keeps me here past 2024, right? <laughs> like, Yeah. Well, and Shap I mean, I think Shapiro is going to stick with Atkins. I think that they're, they're uh, you know, I think he'll stick with him for years. Well, this is what this is what worries me is like I look at this team every I mean, the, so there are there are fans that I do get a kick out of that are like, this is this team's going to not even win 80 games. This is a team that's going to be horrible. This is the worst Blue Jays team I've ever watched. And it's like, OK, so you just you weren't alive in 2007. Like, like mm -hmm. I, I understand the sentiment and the frustration of watching your your team make the playoffs and then just not be good enough. But like, and, and, and I'm not even I'm not even saying we should compare to the shittiest years. No, but if but you're there, literally because you follow a lot more baseball than me, like, is there a team with this many like potential variants? Like in terms like Manoa, like you Varsho, like you think about the Kirk. I mean, yeah. the, Vladdy, like the, the variants here, if they have the kind of seasons they had last year, we're screwed. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if those guys come back and bounce back, like it's like Manoa could be a Cy Young guy again. So I will say I hate this, but I will give Ross Atkins credit for the balls he's showing right now. If this is the team he's rolling back, because he's literally just been like, guess what? I had it right last year. It was bad luck as to why things played out the way they did. And we're rolling it right back. He's done so with his manager. He's done so with a bunch of this core, right? Like you look at the pitching staff, he's done literally nothing to augment it outside of Yariel Rodriguez, who we will get into really, really quickly here. Cause he's having visa problems, which is uh, like really the most Canadian uh, comedian problem that you could possibly have <laughs> he can't get into the country uh but why can't he that's insane yeah i guess we'll get to it but yeah that's yeah yeah that's very canadian yes it is right so i you know like if ross atkins truly believes that that this is the team and he's gonna just go against all of the evidence from last year and the fan base who he knows is about as riled up as they've ever been. Um, it shows some intestinal fortitude, you know, it kind of shows like 
I'm impressed. I, yeah. I want well, more, but if this is literally what he's doing, I mean, fire well, him to no end if well, it doesn't work. But <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you think about the comment, like a commentary, Scott Boris every year has something very nice to say about Jay's management. Not this summer, though. Not this offseason. No. But no. every other offseason, he's, oh, the Jays, what an organization. Uh, so, like, to me, like that, you know, like the silence speaks volumes where it's like th this was a situation where Boris thought, like, there's Toronto is under a massive amount of pressure. Yeah. They're going to have to massively overpay for one of my guys. They're going to have to. And we are going to sit on the sidelines and wait for teams like the Jays to get to a point where they panic. And Atkins was like, we're not going to panic. We'll run it back. And Boris is like, I don't believe that you're going to run it back. I don't think you are. <laughs> I think you're going to need one. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. And, and Atkins is like, no, we are totally comfortable running it back. Um, you know, Schneider, Schneider's going to play platoon in left field. And Boris is like, like, fuck, he is this is <laughs> yeah. all, smoke show, these guys. So like, yeah, it's all a game kind of right. Where you're like, well, how does this play out? But then who's going to be the winner? Who knows? But I like the fact that Atkins is like, no, nah, I'm not going to let some agent yeah. make me overpay by 150 million for one of his guys. Like it's not happening. How comfortable Atkins is makes me incredibly uncomfortable though. Like I, yeah. I would love to see my general manager, Feel the heat a little bit, and well, maybe for, for Shapiro to just throw out like you know, um, you know, continuity is a competitive advantage. Like, okay, all right, mm -hmm. thanks, Mark. You know, you're basically putting no pressure on your GM. You're like, we're at a massive advantage by not firing Ross Atkins because now we continue to have Ross Atkins, <laughs> 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 and people just like people in the press conference are like, yeah, no, I guess it is a competitive advantage to you know not fire somebody who's potentially shitty at their job. Like, oh wait a minute, like maybe yeah. somebody's better at it. Um, so but... we'll we'll talk we'll talk I, with with the Orioles jumping in on Corbin Burns and bringing in a legitimate ace into that lineup. You would think that this pressure we're talking about on Atkins would heat up. So we will get into that before we do. We'll finish this Jays talk, which is talking about Yariel Rodriguez. Uh, this is from ESPN. It's uh, it's been two weeks now since the blue Jays and right-hander Yariel Rodriguez came together on a four year, $32 million deal that would bring Rodriguez to the majors for the first time in his career. The deal still hasn't been made official. However, as indicated by reporter Francis Romero, Rodriguez has yet to be able to secure a visa that would allow him to enter either Canada or the United States. Well, he'll of course eventually need approval from both countries to play in the majors. Romero adds that Rodriguez will undergo a physical in whichever country first issues him a visa. So whoever breaks first, I guess. God. Um, Perfect. Just red tape. Like, I just love that. It's just like, it affects everyone, right? Like even major league baseball is like, Oh my God, we got to get this Cuban into Canada. Like, how are we going to we do this? And, and he can't get into the States or Canada. Yeah. Like how, what? Um, you'd think that that would be kind of a slam dunk. Like, what are you coming into the country for immigrant? Yeah. Like <laughs> I'm coming in to make millions of dollars yeah. and pay massive amounts of taxes. Like yeah. right this way, sir. You know, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to pass by the barbed wire in Texas. You don't to, yeah. Sir, what are you doing on that dinghy? <laughs> You're too close to the wires. <laughs> You'd think that he'd be able to, like, you know, fly over that scenario. Like, yeah. it's insane. Oh, sir, you're in this line. Follow the chandeliers, right? Like, Isn't it crazy? We're talking about, like, there's a border explosion. There's a major problem at the southern border. People are pouring in. And and then at the same time, there's a guy who's scheduled to make many millions of dollars playing in your country. And he's having trouble getting a visa. Like, yeah. In both countries? In both I, countries, I, I don't which understand. does make me wonder if it has something to do with... So he reneged on his contract in Japan. So he was supposed to be in Japan this year, or last year and this year. He bailed after the WBC. Great. More good news. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh uh, the, the his Japanese team reluctantly gave him his posting rights this year after he sat out all the last year. And they're like, okay, well, if you're just not going to play, I guess we'll let you go. So I don't know of uh, how the past job 
affects yeah. the next country, but th there could be a snag there. I don't know what the, the hold that's up the thing is. too with media too, is like the media ecosystem that we're in. It's like, maybe this is completely routine and that's clickbait. Right. I mean, it's like, I, yes. I don't know, you know, it's and I like, fell right for it. I was like, well, I would hey, have nothing's too. happening. He's having we visa can... problems, <laughs> you know, but then it's like, yeah, it always takes eight weeks. And you're like, oh, okay, well, why didn't somebody say that? It's like, well, because <laughs> that guy was looking for you to go onto his thing and buy a mug. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, but yeah, who knows? I mean, maybe it is visa problems because I mean, it's, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that would be very Blue Jays, wouldn't it? Where it's like, no Americans want to come here. Fine, we'll get some Cubans. <laughs> and they, yeah, and they're like, uh, like uh, uh. I can't, I'd, I would, I'd love to come, but they won't let me in. Like, they won't let me in. Yeah, yeah. So it's like either we got a guy. So if you're if you're Ross Atkins, you're like, great. Either we got guys who can get in who don't want to be here, or we got guys who want to be want to be here and they can't get in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you think I'm shitty as a GM? Thanks, guys. Thanks, fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, this hasn't been like the most positive podcast so far, but I feel like it is going to get more negative. Uh, just talking about Corbin Burns going to the Orioles, because the one the one thing that Baltimore Never is. like the one thing Baltimore had as an Achilles heel. Was their pitching like that was one thing last year, and I mean, it, it they proved it in the playoffs, right? It's the second they got to the playoffs, like they. Yeah. As soon as they were in a 3-2 game, they lost. Mm -hmm. And now they yeah. went out and they, they get Corbin Burns. Guy. And yeah. it was pretty frustrating. to So they got him for the sixth top prospect in Baltimore. In system, system. Joey Ortiz. Uh, and then their 10th ranked pitching prospect in, like, in DL Hall. Insane. So a few things. Number one, I'm like, if that's the return, no shit the Jays are sitting on Alec Manoa. Like, if that's what you're getting, I know it's only a one-year deal. I know that Corbin Burns is a free agent. And he's definitely, I mean, he's definitely going to go to free agency. Like, that he's with mm -hmm. Baltimore for one year. And then if they wish to pay him the most, I'm sure he'll go back. But yeah, Baltimore is also a city where it's like, yeah, you better pay me the money to be in Baltimore. Right. Like nobody's making mm -hmm. deals to stay with the Orioles. Yeah. Or you love the team. You love the fan base. You know, like, yeah, you're like, this is the, you know, it's because yeah, a lot of them say winning is important, but, you know, not over money. So, but yeah, you just hope that he comes in and he's like, hey, what a great town. What a great team. We're going to win a championship. Um, Obviously, that's, what, but you just, whenever you see trades like that, you're like, how, well, I guess the Jays wouldn't have. I mean, to me, when I look at the Jays, I, I see a team that's like not, you know, we're we're wild card bound mm -hmm. every year. Seemingly, there's always going to be a team uh, that's going to be hotter than us in the AL East, and and then you need one elite pitcher, one mm -hmm. elite starting pitcher, where it's like when he's on, nobody's touching him. And the Jays haven't had that. They have very good starting pitching, but they have the kind of starting pitching that you know, if you game plan for and you have an elite offense, you can go beat them. They kind of have four number twos. I, I And I mean, no disrespect to Kevin Gosman, who I, is a top 10 starting pitcher in this league, but I just don't think he's quite that next level. Like he's a guy who I think quite easily is going to get top 10 Cy Young votes for the mm -hmm. rest of this contract. But is he ever going to be that top three guy? I don't know. Like yeah. he, led a, he led the American League in strikeouts last year. Like he does... He, he's he's an ace yeah but... but you don't feel great about him going up against burns in uh in game I don't. one series probably not yeah like you know and then and then we and then we're trying to piggyback like you know the jays love to they just tinker too much it's just like you know it's like it's like day trade it's like trying to beat the stock market where you're like if we did this and we did that and then you and then 10 years later you're like we would have been better off like just putting it in an ETF and not even paying attention. We would have made more money than every day. Like, what are we going to do with this? You know, they're just mm -hmm. like, just let it go. Like, let them play baseball a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, I guess I'm old school, but it's like, you don't need to be manipulating this much. You know, I don't know. That's just my take on it. But yeah, they like to do that. They love to do that. And it's why I'm a little like, 
it's just such an unsexy way to run a team. And I know that the Tampa Bay Rays are example number one as to why this type of team can work just fine. But Mm -hmm. when you, but I think, I think you, when you're a low, when you're a low revenue team and you have a low payroll, you have to find, you have to do that. Mm -hmm. We aren't that. No, they're the sixth highest paid team in baseball. Yeah, so you you don't have to you you don't have to little tinker. You know what I mean? Like you can just let your payroll play. And for the Rays, it's like, well, if we can't just let our payroll play. We'll get smoked. We have to be like t- you know fiddling around the edges here. So but, yeah, let's let's break this trade down a little bit here. Uh, this is all speculation and not apples to apples, by the way. But I will say that. General manager of the Chicago White Sox, Chris Getz, he has been shopping Dylan Cease. Cy Young vote getter the last couple of years, a real stud, a real ace. And the rumors are that he wants four top 10 prospects, one of which is a top three prospect for sure. Uh, now, Dylan Cease does have two years remaining on his contract, so there is that extra year. But he also wants uh, guys that have played in the majors for a year or two. So, like, not only does he want these, like, top-end prospects, he wants a guy who's already got a little bit of major league experience. And then you look at what the the Milwaukee Brewers flipped Corbin Burns for, and it's it's a little jaw-dropping in that he Corbin Burns won a Cy Young two years ago. He's led the National League in strikeouts twice. Yeah. He doesn't walk people. Like, Sean, he just doesn't walk people. Nobody like, hates this trade more than the White Sox. You know, oh, the White Sox have got to be trade. losing their mind yeah. over this. This <laughs> is a terrible trade. <laughs> like, and, and I mean, you know, unless does Baltimore have uh, like a really high ranked um, farm system or they they do, they do. So the, they do have, I mean, Jackson Holiday is the number one prospect in all of baseball and he's with Baltimore right now. Interestingly enough, the Milwaukee Brewers have the second highest ranked prospect in all of baseball in Jackson Chorizo. All 19 year old baseball players are named Jackson, by the way, Sean. Yeah. Uh, so they actually even just bought out all of this kid's R beers. They, uh, what was the the money here? Eight years, 82 million. They gave this Jackson Chorizo, who has never played a major league game, by the way. So, wow. You are that confident that he's going to hit and he's going to play defense. And you got to give it to the, to the brewers though, right? Like small market team. Trying to pull the Wander Franco off and crossing their fingers that they picked the right kid mm-hmm. right like, yeah <laughs> they picked the right grown adult <laughs> a grown yeah. adult who also enjoys other grown adults <laughs> <Yeah>. company <laughs> yes. hey you're a grown adult you enjoy the company of exclusively grown adults like well i don't know yeah i mean what a strange <laughs> and that, that, i mean i guess i hadn't thought about wander franco and, like is he done in major league baseball oh, like, yeah. just, i mean the rays like how bad is their luck like you don't you know i mean so we when i jay's bad luck I was in uh, the Dominican Republic for three year, uh, three weeks uh, over Christmas three. and stuff, and I went and saw a bunch of those lead em games. And talking to the fans there about Wander Franco, like the Dominican Republic, they're just like, oh, yeah, fucking throw him in jail. Like, it is ridiculous. And they're like, th- th- it's funny because the one guy that I was talking to, the thing he was most upset about was the perception that – uh americans and canadians have he's like i keep hearing people talk about how well it's the culture he's like the culture fuck you guys like like yeah (laughs) he's like yeah like he's like there's horrible things that happen all over the world he's like why is it the culture the dominican republic is is dating 13 year olds hey you you, you've you've heard those drums and they're always dancing and sometimes (laughs) you you know you dance in this way and then they like literally that's yeah that's that that's hilarious that that's how a dominican would see it because he'd be like what are you talking about like well we just picture you guys dancing with steel drums um (laughs) and kind of a late reggae and sometimes you turn and your dance partner happens to be under 18 yeah you're at at the beach (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, you know, that's hilarious that that's how we, you know, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, that is actually ridiculous that we think that way, that it's a different, yeah. like, no, it's still 18 is an adult. It's, uh, yeah. not, you know, like on South America, they're 12. You can go to war when you're nine. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, if you're old enough to go to war, you're old enough to date Wander Franco. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure oh yes we all know that saying is oh, the saying God. as old as time <laughs> if you're yes. old enough to fight for your country and die you're old enough to take <laughs> an instagram photo of wonder franco. franco where you're kissing him and how did that, uh, i mean i i guess when i looked at that i was like how do they how do they even crack the case i mean what are you talking about like he's just you know i don't, can't he isn't he he's rich he's a rich guy can't he just say like oh no nothing happened weird yeah the whole scenario is weird and, but now we've got baltimore yeah i mean that's the thing that sucks as, as a jays fan is like it, it's you know the yankees and the red sox maybe they're in a downturn but then you got the rays and the orioles like you, you're fighting the germans and the italians and then you're like Jap japan yeah baltimore starts dropping planes out of the sky onto your land carriers or whatever you're you know I mean, you look at the Orioles, Gunnar Henderson won rookie of the year last year for the AL for them. I mean, Adley yeah, Rushman, they're... Adley Rushman probably should have won rookie of the year the year before. He just didn't quite have enough reps at the plate, but he was mm -hmm. his numbers were right there. Uh and then this Jackson Holiday is considered he's yeah, he's the number one prospect in all of baseball. He's considered better than anyone on the Orioles right now. Like My it's, God. it's wild. What so they are building. I mean, and so now we've got the new Astros in our division. And if this new ownership group spends, like, fuck, man. Oh, God. I'm just going to watch Cal Ripken just wave in and, like, your stupid streak. <laughs> I played in a lot in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I never took a day off. Like, yeah, welcome to plumbing, loser. Yeah, so I was reading about these prospects that the Brewers picked up for Burns. And according to these this ESPN report, yeah, the Brewers are very excited about these guys. Like I guess this this um his name now. Joey Ortiz, uh shortstop. He they love him like they really love him he was the guy they were after which i guess i mean if you're gonna move your ace pitcher you you should get who you want uh mm -hmm. it does make things interesting with willie adamas who's their current shortstop he's got one year left at 12 and a half million dollars they want to get this joy or ortiz into the lineup now they want him coming up with uh, wow. jackson chorizo and some of these other young kids that they've got ready to graduate so i mean just to swing this back to Blue Jays speculation, there is a hole at third base. I mean, yes, we've got 12 guys who can play third base. None of them, any of us are really all that excited about. Uh, would a Willie Adamas, 24 home runs last year, hit about 220. Like, he's he's not a hit for average guy, but his OPS plus was 95, so slightly below league average. But again, he is hitting bombs and has had an OPS plus of 116 and 134 the last two years. So he has been an above average hitter most of his career. He's got experience in the AL East, came from the Tampa Bay Rays. Is a move like this, like if, if, if you look at what Milwaukee got for Burns, you would think Willie Adamas is going to be cheaper than that. Is it worth the Jays? packaging a, a Spencer Horowitz and maybe some of these parts that like, where do we fit them in? I mean, I, I, I would, I, I would hesitate to do that. I mean, I, I would just say, you know, we don't know what our prospects look like. We, you know, we, we, as an organization, we haven't really done a great job of giving our prospects opportunities until a bit last year and it looks like a little bit more this year like getting an actual opportunity to play and see who they are and what they are um we do tend to sort of package prospects and trade them for known commodities and i wouldn't i mean adamas to me doesn't move the needle enough to say like let's move on from say a horowitz and then boom horowitz was the guy you know, we find out two years from now, Horowitz was yeah, the guy. Next thing you know, he's Rowdy Telez hitting 36 bombs for the Brewers at first base. Exactly. 
Yeah. So it's like, okay, let's give them a chance. Let's just see what they can do, what they are. Um, you know, it's I weird how I we lean, get... I lean more towards what you're saying. And I think it is, and I like Willie Adamas. I think he's a good player. I just don't know if the needle is moved enough for that to be a transaction the Jays pursue. And I could be wrong. I you're I'm just looking at his numbers from last year, and yes, the home runs are I mean, the Blue Jays top home run hitter was Vladi. Uh, with 26, right? Like they didn't even have a 30 home run guy last year. So an extra 24 bombs does look good. It would help. Yeah. Yeah. God. I mean, it is tough because you would like to serve I mean, it would solve some problems, but I guess obviously it's in context. Like who do you have to give up to get them? Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, would they want pitching in return? Like young pitching probably, but I mean, yeah. we're not going to go down that road. I mean, is Tiedemann going to pitch for this team this year? Yes. You think? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I know I was talking with uh, Scotty Mitchell of TSN and outside of innings, they they would they would have Tiedemann in the lineup starting April 1st. But I mean, obviously there's service time manipulation that has to happen. So if he doesn't join yeah, the team, it has to happen. It has to happen. If he doesn't yeah. join the team until April 28th, they automatically his RB years don't start for a full another year. There's mm-hmm. no way the Jays can't spin three weeks of Tiedemann in the minors, right? So oh, that's sure. happening for yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, the way Mitchell described it was that uh, Tiedemann is so dominant that they will let him do just that in AAA and force their hand, right? So hopefully... That's, they're, Manoa. They're, that's what happened with Manoa, right? They're hoping that Manoa mm-hmm. shows he has some value again, and then I bet they trade him. Because I guess the the relation, this is all speculation and just stuff I've heard from people who know more than me, but I there there is a riff in the relationship, obviously, <laughs> between the Jays and Manoa. But this, Which, this I mean, organization like, cares so much about value, right? Like, they want to make sure they get their value for their assets. So they're not going to move Manoa just because they're disappointed in him. And they also, like, care about relationships. Like, if you talk to players that, you know, when they're talking about the Jays, or like, you know, they, they all tend to have good relationships with yeah. Athens and Pyro and the coaching staff and the, and, and the and support staff. And, you know, so, I mean, to me, I would blame this a little bit more on Manoa. It's like, you know, your results were poor. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where the rift comes from because it's like you were the start, you were the opening day starter. It's not like we had, oh, ye of little faith. You guys didn't believe in me. I was your opening day starter. I was the main, like in the playoffs, I was game one. Like the Jays couldn't have done more to signal to Manoa that you're our guy. Yeah. You're the guy. You're our guy. You're our ace. These other guys are two, three, four, five. You are the number one. And then his results were bad. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, so like when I see stuff on social media of like, you know, Manoa, like, I'm going to prove, you know, like lifting weights, I'm going to prove these guys wrong. It's like, I mean, nobody was a hater. (laughs) You just couldn't get, you just struggled to get people out and you had to be removed from ball games. Like there weren't many games where I was like, what did they take a Manoa out for? You know, like, yeah. It was like, know. you better get him out of there. I don't know if there was then, one last year where I was like, what are they? And then he turns Manoa around or? and like hates the Blue Jays. Like to me, that's on Manoa. Yeah. Like, um, so, I mean, and if you go somewhere else and you don't pitch well, they're not going to like you there either. You know, Manoa and it's weird is... because it seemed like such a love in like the J the Jays and Manoa and his mom and like the whole yeah. story. And let's do a Rogers presents yeah. an hour movie about his time in Florida. Like, it was a love fest until last year. Yeah. So, he's, they, he's so maybe one it can of the be biggest repaired, question so. marks. You were talking about this, right? Like just how this team more than like, I look around the landscape of baseball and I can't see a team with more question marks. And it could be that I'm just like, so invested in these blue Jays, but like, mm-hmm. man, like Manoa, who knows what we're going to get. Right. Vladdy, question mark Bo like this is the thing with Bo right is like and this is how hope works Sean uh (laughs) I I've put like so many of these 2024 Blue Jays succeeding eggs I have in the Bichette basket where I'm like imagine if he's an MVP and then all these problems go away right like 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. which is also unfair to Bo, who's literally been the most consistent and best player on this team, like pretty regularly the last few years. Uh, despite yeah. despite and his defensive he, downfalls, he's only improved. And he can hit, you know, like unlike sort of Vladdy, who you know, it seems like there's always people in his corner that are like kind of there's like always like a whisper campaign about like. Well, there's nobody hitting behind him. There's nobody behind him. Like, you know, you never hear that from Bo. Like, it doesn't matter if Vladdy's if Vladdy's not hitting behind Bo, Bo's not complaining about having a guy who can't hit behind him. He still hits. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter who's behind him, he hits. Um, whereas Vladdy, it seems to be contingent on all sorts of things around him going correctly or whatever, you know. Um, but yeah, the other I thing mean, about Bo... Bo that's impressive is like how much he plays. I know last year he he played 141 games, which was his low water mark in the last four years, pretty much outside of the COVID season. Um, you know, he missed time last year, but still 140 games for your regular shortstop is pretty great, especially when you look at 2022, where he played 160 and 159 in 2021. Like uh, to be able to pencil yeah. a guy in like that regularly. Yeah, he really is that guy where, you know, when you talk about like, okay, maybe in a scenario where he wins an MVP, you know, and, and but it's it's not out of the realm of possibility that he could, you yeah. know, considering how talented he is. Like he gets off to a hot start and then he never cools off. And it's like, oh wow, this guy's, you know, batting title, this guy's insane. Yeah. And his defense is average. And you know, if you've got an average shortstop who hits like him, that is MVP. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, if that happens, if there's so many ifs, like the team is just a walking if bomb, you know, Kirk, <laughs> like, what is he, what is he weighing in at? You know, like, I mean, what is he going to look like? Is he going to look, maybe he'll look like Gabby Moreno next year. Just like a, just a ripped little guy from Tijuana. Like <laughs> who knows? Yes, what he, please. Cause he, he, you know, he was too big last year. Just yeah. flat out. Like there was just, so he, he needed to get it under control. And also like, I think I was texting you about that recently. Like, is there any other team that has this many for a team with the training facilities and the sports science and all that, was there another team that had an issue of obesity with many players on their team? Like, I mean that, you know, like the truth is dude, whether Conditioning was an actual problem or just something that people were talking about. I, I do think it was an obvious problem. Um, the fact that there were three guys that this question mark was around, like you summed it up beautifully. It's like, what other team can you think of that, even if it's wrong, that this was even something that was talked about? Mm -hmm. I can't think of one. No. Forget about a team with three of them on it. Yeah, and it and I mean they got to kind of hide behind the fact that you know if it was brought up anywhere it was sort of like, you know that that's fat phobic or or whatever mm -hmm. you know you're it's like body pot like it's like what are you talking this isn't you know th this isn't rec league yeah where I'm like hey Sean why what's up with you being so I mean try to be more body positive here at <laughs> in beer league this is professional <laughs> baseball like. You know, if you're 105 pounds overweight, you're probably not as good a back catcher as you would be if you were not 105 pounds overweight. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just so. Yeah, I mean, he he'll be exciting to watch. Like that'll be, you know, he's he's uh, he he could be a totally different player this year. So uh, let's talk real quickly the Boston Red Sox because Jeff Passan of ESPN reported just this morning Theo Epstein is returning to the Boston Red Sox he'll join Fenway Sports Group as a senior advisor and while he won't be in charge of personal decisions his voice should carry enormous weight on the Red Sox as they figure out how to get back into contention in the AL East uh, well, what's your theory on why the Red Sox just haven't been good the last four or five years? Is it, I mean, I guess they have been shedding payroll, right? I mean, that's so. That's the I think, main. I think with the moving. Sox. I think moving a player of Mookie Betts' talents and ilk when he wants to stay, uh, that's a tough one to recover from. I think the the first domino was moving Betts after that World Series win, 
especially if you look at that they were just going to three years later give $300 million to Rafael Devers. You know, like I, I, I think Devers is an extraordinary talent and probably deserved mm. that payday. But Betts also deserved that payday. So if you're going to pick a guy, like why not pick the World Series MVP? Well, uh, I was always under the impression that they were like, okay, Betts endeavors, Betts endeavors. This is our core. This is our Bo and Vladdy. This, these are our guys. And then Betts didn't want to stay. Nope. Betts he did want to stay. Betts wanted to stay, but Betts didn't want to give a hometown discount. And fair. Yeah. Like fair, yeah. you know? And if they had, been, yeah. And you lose him and then it, it just sort of like, okay, now we need to shed salary. Let's get below this threshold. Let's get below that threshold. And before you know it, in a division like the AL East, you're just toast. People are just walking on you. There's there's other factors at play too. I know that John Henry and his ownership group also owns a uh, soccer team in the Premier. I think it's the Premier League. Maybe it is. Is it Manchester League. United or is it Man City or something? I, I don't know. It, it's a big one. I, I should know. I, I mean, this yeah. is just everyday sports info. I should know, but I, I don't. But yeah. <laughs> uh, the rumors are the rumors are is that it has affected the Red Sox ability to spend because they just the way the books work. Right. All of this is under one sports thing. Again, I'm really showing how much I know about international sports and finance here. So uh... <laughs> <laughs> that well, because, said, the yeah. Red Sox are still going to spend close to two hundred million dollars this year. It's not like they're a poverty franchise. They no. just aren't prepared to go the like I, I was going to joke about the fact uh, or I joked about the fact on on Twitter as like Theo Epstein advises the Red Sox stop finishing fourth for free agents you're pursuing like you know like, <laughs> like oh okay that's what we <laughs> oh that's where oh. we're dropping the ball yeah and just the last few years I guess they haven't had the starting pitching right whenever I go yeah. whenever the Jays go into a series against the Red Sox I never feel like oh we're a little overmatched here we're gonna have a tough time getting on base you know like mm -hmm. um I feel like okay we're gonna score some runs they're gonna they're gonna struggle to score runs against us you know sometimes they go on a little heater but yeah they're not really a serious threat is how I viewed them the last two or three years and but it wouldn't, but it's weird because you like the Red Sox are just this, like almost like the Cubs, where it's like more players should want to play there. You feel like, yeah, the the history of, of the sport yeah, like, there alone. But you would just think more players would end up landing in the Red Sox organization because it's like, I always wanted to be a Red Sox, or mm -hmm. like, you know, that it's so it seems like maybe the shine is off a little bit on that franchise right now that never goes off the Yankees. Mm -hmm. You know, the Yankees always sort of have that, uh, that sort of luster or whatever, but the Red Sox, they've lost it. You know, they're not in that race anymore and they can get back there. All they got to do is spend oh, yeah. money. Yeah. And, but, and they, even, but they, even... but they used to just spend gobs of money. They used to overspend and sort of the Yankees. And it was like, yeah. and that's the key to victory is just, just whatever. Like, yeah, there you go. Just throw a bunch of money at it. Just defer all your payments to the 2030. God. It'll be fine. I hate it when people do smart things like that for their organization. And it's like God. bad for everybody else. And you're like, you <laughs> rat. <laughs> you little rat. Because Otani, because and it, it's like, why didn't I mean I'm sure that our deal was the same, right? Our, yeah, I'm no, sure it, it, it did come out that the both the Cubs and the Jays were offered the same deal from Otani. So And then it was just up to him to pick which and then one. It was he up to him to. as to like where he signs which was all <laughs> we, I guess. <laughs> we hate the lady that left us at the altar even though she's really pretty yeah and <laughs> yeah yeah and never really was on the way to the altar we just no. got bad info uh yeah and morosi too like i felt bad for morosi because he's one of the few sort of baseball insider guys that does interviews in canada and talks about canadian stuff and like yeah um, you know, he does sort of stick up for Canada a little bit when he's doing his MLB, but it just shows you how loose the framework of what is an insider, what like, because there's, there's a, for, if you look at a guy like Morosi or like Passon's a little different because he just deals in like facts or whatever his sources yeah. must be really high up. But, you know, for a lot of those guys, there's no price to be paid for being too early and there's a heavy price for being too late. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, that's the ecosystem those guys are in is like, if you're the fourth guy to report that Otani's a Blue Jay, 
you know, you're on the road to losing your job. Why didn't you know that a half an hour ago? But there's no price to be paid for just jumping in a half an hour before everybody and then going, I love whoops, the I hierarchy of baseball analysts. Jeff Passan deals in facts. Everybody else. Like, it's just like... <laughs> well, it's all, but I mean, I think Passan has made that lane for himself where he's just sort of like, I'm, I'm, well, he's, he reminds me, he's sort of like Elliot Friedman in hockey where most of his sources are league sources. Mm -hmm. And so he's dealing in deals that are coming across the desk of Major League Baseball. Yeah. And those are his sources. And Elliot Friedman is the same, where his sources are generally like league sources. And so it's like sources say this and it's like, okay, then that was a fact that that was an email that came to the office or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then other guys don't have that access. They don't have league access. They don't have. Well, Scott Boris told me. <laughs> yeah, Boris said. <laughs> One of my sources lied to me. Like, yeah, that's, that's what he does. Like, that's hilarious. Yeah. So, I mean, either you have the, the high level, high end sourcing or you don't. And you're just sort of running around and. You know, it just sort of, and now when I'm on Twitter or something and I hear anything Jay's related, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like yeah. I just throw it right. That's what in it's the become. It's just dismissed now. Like I, I, yeah. They got me with the Otani shit, and I will not be Never heading again. In. Like, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, they got me, and you know, like, yeah. I mean, how many times have I been had on social media? Probably many times as oh, a fan. Yeah. Something cooking that you think is like, I want that to happen, and they're yeah. like, this could happen. Follow this thread. Follow this. What follow do you me. mean Michael Brantley isn't a Toronto Blue Jay after all? Like... What? What? Yeah. No, I got Brantley for sure. I got totally <laughs> Brantley. I was like, and even this, even the guy from Cuba, it's like, maybe he's not even coming. Maybe that was right. never. He can't even get in. They don't even, he can't, he wants to be here. He can't get in. But all it's right, funny. So... Every, every, every season you go in filled with still hope. Right. I mean, you know, you still go in and think, you know, that uh, it this could still be the year. Every year you think this could be the year. So we will end on the fact uh, we'll give our AL East rankings where we think each team is at right now in the division. Uh, before we do that, though, and everyone in on uh, YouTube here, feel free to drop where you think this division is going to line up here. And we can go over this more thoroughly uh, on Mailbag on Tuesday. But before we do that, home run derby champion Vladimir Guerrero Jr. officially announced as the cover of MLB The Show 2024, which, you know, he's in his full shush mode, as you say. Right? Yeah. He's got a full shush. Yeah, he's got to, like, touch touch the wrists <laughs> back up before he gets to third. Well, there's third base. Look out. <laughs> but I love this decision because it's almost like the show sat down with their producers and was like, what is going to upset Yankees fans the most? Like what will literally get the most pushback as someone on mm -hmm. the cover? And they're like, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. The yeah. Yankees what fans will be like, he shouldn't be there. He doesn't deserve it. Like it, this is the movie, the, the trailer comment, right? Like <laughs> never yeah, wanting like, to play in New York. Like they're, smart. they're seething. <laughs> yeah. It's smart. Yeah. Cause it's like, what's going to get the most traction. What's going to get the most people, what's going to get the most shares. Yes. And it's definitely Vladdy. Like if you just put on Otani, it'd be snoo It's that's a snooze fest, right? That's mm -hmm. an absolute snooze fest to have Otani on there. But if you, because this would have been the year, right? Where you just have Otani in a Dodgers uniform and that's, and you know, it's a slam dunk. Yeah. There's a reason you don't do that. And it's because like, nobody's going to share it. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to, you know, it's, it, it doesn't generate any interest. Uh, but you put Vladdy on it and it's like, well, it's legitimate. Uh, yeah. He's a prodigious hitter, but he's despised in some markets and they're going to hate it. And, you know, <laughs> they're going to try to curse him and, yeah, because the Yankees fans uniquely despise Vladimir Guerrero Jr. They really do. It is a unique hate. Yeah, yeah because other teams are just like, oh, Vladdy, he's smiling, he's having fun, he's you know, yeah, he's yeah. all right. They wouldn't even know he's a Gold Glove caliber first baseman. They just be like, yeah, he's an okay defender. You know, he, yeah. he rakes, and it's like, actually, no, it's the opposite. Actually, he, yeah, he doesn't really rake. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you obviously don't watch a lot of Jays games. <laughs> He swings through a lot of breaking balls that are off the plate, and then he sits down again. Yeah, yeah. Well, resurgence yeah, from who do, you have, who, do you, who do you have winning the division? That's that is interesting. 
Uh, so I just honestly think this Yankees pitching is better than anyone's giving it credit for. I really think Carlos Rodon is going to, I mean, man, he was uh, getting Cy Young votes before he went to the Yankees, just couldn't stay healthy last year. And then on top of it, uh, on top of not being able to be healthy, also had to deal with the onslaught of uh, naysayers in Yankees land who just, as soon as he didn't produce right out of the gate, we're ready to like burn him at the stake. Right. So he was kind mm -hmm. of in this shit situation. I think Nestor Cortez, same thing coming back healthy is going to be much better. Garrett Cole is still Garrett Cole. I mean, Cy Young award winner, Garrett Cole, people yeah. can hate on him all, all they want. Marcus Stroman, I think was an excellent signing by the Yankees. He's a guy who pitches big in Yankee stadium. He's from He's New gonna York. Love it. He's going to yeah. love it. I'm going to hate it, but he's going to love it, right? He's going to love it, yeah. You now have Soto. Like, man, adding Juan Soto, putting him in the two-hole, like, I, if it's Judge 1, Soto 2, like, who gives a fuck who's 3 and 4 almost at that point? <laughs> like, yeah. it's just so potent. Yeah. God. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that's, God, that's a tough one. So I, mean, I got the Yanks one. I got the Yanks winning the division. I got the Orioles two. I think that with Corbin Burns that they're set up, but I, I, I still don't, I, they need more pitching wise. I can't also the, the Orioles were the best team in baseball with runners in scoring position. And although I do believe a little bit in clutch, I don't believe in the point of like it being repeatable, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, like, year over year. Yeah. Yeah. Like in season, it's like a, it's almost like a power play in hockey where it's like you're just feeling so really you based. just have a lot of confidence in, you know, like, yeah, there's a guy on second, but I'm not squeezing my bat because we've been doing this all year, mm -hmm. you know, but then the next year starts and it starts over. Like maybe you don't hit with runners in scoring position as well. Maybe you don't have as good a power play. Like, yeah, it's yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's funny, too, because everybody every year we'll snooze on Tampa because you're like, well, I mean, not this year. I mean, but that's every season that we go into the season thinking, Hey man, I'm guilty. I'm about well. to snooze on Tampa right here. Cause I've got Jays three Tampa four, but I, I kind of, kind of in my head though, man, it's like, they're both three, four, you know, like they're going to be fighting it out for the final wild card spot and I'm biased. So I'm going to uh, put my yeah. chips behind. Oh, the you have here. to, yeah, you have yeah. to think. You can't just be like, oh, the, the J is five. You know, I mean, it's like, I mean, that could happen. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but yeah, it's just what a crazy division it is with Baltimore as the ascension of the Orioles. Yeah. The Yankees get, I mean, you know, the, the hope going into the offseason was that the Jays would be able to bolster themselves and they're the ones that haven't been able to. You know, the Yankees got better. The Orioles got better. We got a 40 year old who can play a little third base. Um, you know, it's yeah, so it's you know, in some you're just like, where do we fit in? I mean, is the pitching is our is the pitching staff what does the pitching staff look like? I mean, I'm still pretty confident in the in the starting pitching, and I and the bullpen I think is going to be still pretty strong. So, can we pitch our way out of a jam for 162 again? Can we pitch our way to the playoffs again? That's I mean, tough. They fucking better. Like, it's really, I mean, they literally are rolling back pitching and defense, right? Like, they literally have doubled down. Ross Atkins has said this was uh, an anomaly in 2023. Our numbers are correct. You're going to all see that this this <laughs> this math game we're playing is going to work out. God. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> So it's like this, the smarmy kind of Ivy League, you know, like wow. it's yeah, this is this, like you guys don't, I couldn't, you fans couldn't possibly understand. It's quite complicated, really. Um, just sit and enjoy the games at Rogers yeah. Center. Um, just you know, know we're like, monitoring exit velo and and <laughs> and spin rates. So uh, yeah, we're all over the spin up, rates. Yeah, and, everything's fine. Oh God, yeah, it's just such a smarmy approach. But I mean, you know. I don't know. Hey, I, mean, I hope I hope we're sitting here in six months, Sean, talking about what a fucking genius Ross Atkins is, and he really I hope showed so. us all. He really yeah. showed us all. Him yeah. and his calculator and his khakis. I guess if I just think about you know my, I would say the Orioles. I probably have um, you know the Orioles one, 
So you have because the Orioles just, winning just, the division. Yeah, because I just think, I mean, whenever we played Baltimore, whenever we played the Orioles last year, and they're only better, they're only, they've only gotten better. Whenever we played them last year, I just felt like, man, we're going to lose this game. You know, like yeah. they're going to come out in the first inning and they're going to smack us right in the mouth. You know, they, they, it just felt like they did that every time we played them. They just got guys on base, got them in. They were up three, nothing. And mm-hmm. we were just like, you know, we just got punched in the mouth. Um, so, but I was, I would have the Orioles one Yankees. God, I, there's a part of me, to be honest with you, that thinks that Soto is going to go down uh, a bit of a hole here with the Yankees. Like maybe that's a a really stupid prediction, but I just feel like the negativity of the Yankee fan base and Soto's kind of a slow start from Juan Soto would be magic. Yeah, it would. I mean, I just feel like there's going to be so much pressure on him to just go out there and hit bombs. And he's like an on-base guy. He, he takes his walks. He like, he's a, he's a patient hitter. He's an excellent hitter, but he's like, he's patient. You know, there's a, there's a potential there where it starts to go poorly in the beginning, you know, where he's not, he's not his normal self. He's a little out of sorts. And then there's a, some boos and cause it does not take long for it to be a boo fest in Yankee stadium. Like, yeah, three games in he'll be getting booed if he hasn't gotten a hit yet. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe that's my, um, just, that's what I'm hoping happens. <laughs> oh, you and me both. rather than a prediction but i would have baltimore one i would have the yankees two i'd have the jays three and yeah i would have uh tampa and then the red Sox five but i mean i'm i mean i the only thing we know for sure is that's going to be wrong that prediction <laughs> is wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll be sitting here in may talking about how did we sleep on the rays again it's or impossible. you'll play it back and I'll be like, yeah, I'll pretend that I had it right. And then you'll be like, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. No, you didn't. You had yeah. this. And I'd be like, no, I'm pretty sure I said that Soto was going to get off to a hot start and the Yankees would win the division. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, let's end it at this. But uh, thank you so much for, for filling in here for Adam. It was great talking baseball yeah. with yeah, you. Yeah, great and, talking uh, with you, Scotty. Yeah, absolutely. Look forward to the next time. All right. Well,